Okay, this is an update on uh, the uh, the penny project, and uh, this is penny number one. And uh, you can't see your LEDs on; it's too bright in here. But anyway, the starting voltage on penny number one on the 26th of uh, August was 1.048 volts, and then it, it dropped down. And I started taking readings on penny number one every day and it went down and then I went on a trip and I came back and the voltage was back up higher than it was when it started and we don't know if it was a solar event or what it was and I've been tracking it since I got home and now it's at about where it was when I started the project over a month ago this is what penny number one sounds like So anyway, I decided to leave penny number one alone, and uh, she's running on one of these uh, IB pointless uh, stovetop cells, which you can go to his channel and find out how to make it. And you've got to make this right, and if you don't make it right, it doesn't work, and I found that out the hard way. you got to cook the uh, borax and salt substitute to a certain point, and then put the magnesium and alum and copper wires on top of that and melt the alum on top of it. If you overcook this, it doesn't work. But anyway, I made another cell here and I've been experimenting with the crystalline cells here and I think they work very similar to a solar cell. And John Bedini has been tr struggling trying to explain all this to us, how these things are working. And uh, I'm get, starting to get a grasp on it. But anyway, I built penny number two. Penny number two is done. And uh, penny number two, I put a uh, transistor socket so that I can change the transistors out and try out different transistors and they do make a difference. Uh, penny number two is now running on an MPS A06 instead of a 2N222. Everything else about penny number two is is like penny number one only she's got a little bit bigger coils and she runs on less um, less power. And I was trying to figure out how these crystalline cells work and John was explaining that when you do it right, the electrons flow around in a circle and there's no real ion exchange between the two, two dissimilar metals that when you set up the crystals just right in these crystal cells, and I don't know if I'm doing it right or not, but supposedly there's a, a path like in a solar cell where the flow goes around when they're excited by photons in a solar cell and something is exciting these it causes this not to deteriorate just like a solar cell doesn't deteriorate it gets hit by something and causes an electrical flow but it's not deteriorating there's no deterioration between the elements in that solar cell it sets up a, a cycle so anyway I thought I would investigate this on the idea of maybe the Avonminkel plug and look it up Avonminkel uh, there's a switching diode that goes this way and a switching diode that goes that way and you've got this circulation that goes on in here and it goes on around like this when you excite this part of the circuit and these uh, penny oscillators are so efficient that I'm starting to be able to see that so what I set up here was an experiment and this is a piece of aluminum and one wire this happens to be a Litz wire, which is uh, multi strands of uh, copper wire woven together. I was using this on another project. Anyway, the wire goes down here along my floor over here to this uh, electrostatic generator that I built. And uh, we call them exciters, but I don't know if that's the correct name or not, but it sets up an electrostatic high frequency signal down a single wire. And I've got this one that runs on one AA battery. I got a meter here to show the amp draw. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to show the amp draw. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put penny number two near this thing here. She's going to start running. Then I'm going to go back and show the voltage or the amperage on the exciter to show that it's not picking up any more amperage. Let me take her, put her way over here out of the way. So she's not near the source of the excitation. The excitation is going to come in here. It's going to hit that Avonminkel plug and start this thing going. And it's going to build up a voltage in that capacitor 
through excitation. So let me turn this on. You see the amp draw, it's about 20 some odd milliamps. Okay, let me stabilize this out a little bit. You'll see this is around 22 milliamps. And the little uh, exciter is now running. It's coming out through one wire. This is just a one wire feed. It's coming over here. It's connected right here to this aluminum block. So what's happening is I've got a signal, high frequency in the megahertz signal hitting this at a very high frequency. Here comes penny number two. I'm going to put penny number two near that aluminum block. Now I'm going to put the radio here so you can listen to her start up. It's going to take a second. And there she goes. Now, there is no connection between the aluminum block and this Avonminko plug. There's a signal transferred through a capacitive link, I believe, to this that excites this circuit into oscillation. Now, there's a voltage built up here. It has to be about 0.4 volts. Penny will, number two will start running, believe it or not, at less than one microamp. It's in the I believe picoamp range. And that's what you're hearing there is, is penny number two running on a signal excitation into this. Now let's look at the amp draw. Same thing as we had before. Maybe a little bit less. And that's just on the AA battery running this uh, simple exciter that I built here. And it's in my videos. If you go back in the videos, you can see this thing here. It's one of the things that Johnny Davro and I worked on months and months and months ago. But what I wanted to show using this was that if you excite this situation with a semiconductor loop, which is what this is. This is a loop going around and around and around. I am not feeding more amperage into this. I'm exciting it and that's causing this penny oscillator to work. Anyway, that's my thoughts on these crystal cells and perhaps how these crystal cells might be working is uh, perhaps what's happening is something is exciting these. Some, some, something is exciting them like photons excite a solar cell and causing them to work. Because based on these readings here that I've taken over a month, I'm not seeing a deterioration in this crystalline cell. This thing here that is exposed to the elements, I'm seeing an oxidation form on this, but I'm not seeing a deterioration. And what we're studying right now is the oxidation layer on the elements that perhaps is forming the semiconductor that we need to make this act like a solar cell. These are just my thoughts on this and my uh, feelings about the theory of perhaps these, these cells and perhaps how they're working. And perhaps, just perhaps, this is not completely galvanic. Anyway, that's my thoughts on it. Maybe this helps. Thanks for watching.